I remember as a kid watching you against uh, the big boss man yeah. where he handcuffed you to the rope and beat you. Yeah, with a yeah. Stick. So, well, how did that come about? And do you have any? Uh, do you have any other memories? Oh, I have some good memories of that because I I didn't do it long, but the the memories I had were intense. First of all, I, when I got there, of course, you're a little bit intimidated, you, you know, in the back room, all these stars. But it turned out 99% of them were just really good guys, you know. They were just down-to-earth guys making a living, making a pretty good dollar. How it came about was uh, through Michelle Starr. He initially, uh, and he did a lot of work for the WWF over the years, and he initially uh, got me and uh, uh, Vern Siebert and Mike Roselli. We went to Calgary here in Edmonton and did a shot there. And we did some TV tapings where we did jobs for the, uh, so I ended up, I, I ended up working with uh, uh, Tugboat and uh, Earthquake, the Nasty Boys, um, a couple other guys who I can't, just recall who was all there at the time, but that was in the days of, there was Kerry Von Erich and uh, uh, Bret Hart was working there at the time, doing fairly well. And uh, anyway, I was at the time, believe it or not, I was, uh, I worked in a prison. So I, I got a, a, I had an opportunity, well, they have a chalkboard there and I was working the big boss man. And at the time he was doing this gimmick of the prison guard. So I was, I was the bad guy, you know, the heel, of course, and went in there and it didn't, he was a great guy to work with. He didn't, uh, there was no problem there, but he did his thing and he, he hit me with a nightstick and whatever and did what he had to do. And then at the end of it, he handcuffed, put the handcuffs on you and he'd handcuff you to the rope. And he had the key in his pocket, you know, to, to, Somebody, I can't, I can't remember if he or somebody else would cut you loose. But anyway, yeah, so I I uh, worked with him. And at the end of the match, of course, I was handcuffed to the rope. Well, that, that match was on TV. And we had a number of inmates who saw it and knew who I was. And there was, uh, and that was about the time they started to get TVs in their cells. And there was one guy there who was a particularly... Uh, troublemaker and an idiot, but he believed wrestling like, you know, and the big boss man was shooting me around the ring and doing this and doing that. And you could hear him all over. The guy said you could hear him on the tier, kill that sow, give it to him, <laughs> you know, and the guys were, the inmates were there. What the hell are you doing cheering for the, the cop, you know? And uh, the inmate was, but they, and I guess it was quite the joke at the time because he was, you could hear him, give it to that sow, you know, because we didn't like each other, of course. So that was, that kind of sticks out in my mind, the aftermath. And actually he had told me a couple of times I saw him, you know, I'd see him in a hallway or something. That looked good on you. He says, you know, getting the, but the inmates were all on him because what the hell are you doing? You're cheering for the wrong guy, you dumb son of a buck, you know? But uh, yeah, so the prison guard. Yeah, I have some good memories of of that, and uh, uh, those guys. Of course, when you're working with guys like that, they're they're all pros. You know, they know what they're doing. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.